Welcome back, everyone, to the Milky What podcast. I'm Henesis, and I'm so glad that you're tuning in for the second episode. I had released the first episode of the podcast about two weeks ago, and I honestly couldn't decide what to talk about in this episode since we're just starting out, and I have so many ideas, and I've just been writing a whole bunch of scripts, and my research is a little bit all over the place. So, who knows, I might release more than one episode in the next few days, or I'll release the next episode next week instead of every two weeks, because two weeks is just way too long. So stay tuned in for that. In the last episode, we covered the differences between astronomy and astrology, and introduced the topic of astrophysics into the mix. Today, we'll be discussing a somewhat new theory that cosmologists have come up with, the concept that space-time is actually a superfluid. This basically means that dark matter in space and all these other particles are just substances that flow with zero friction which causes everyone involved in the physics community to kind of turn their heads. Now, when I first heard of this, it took some time to wrap my head around what exactly is a superfluid. You know, when we talk about space, a lot of us think that it's just empty, literal space. But the truth of the matter is that space can be this violent and hyperactive realm full of energy, chaos, and life. So, a superfluid is basically a substance that remains a liquid when cooled down to absolute zero which is about negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, or zero Kelvin. The best example of this available to us is liquid helium. You know, that thing we see in the movies that causes cryogenic chambers to spill out with fog? Most other liquids freeze long before they reach zero Kelvin, like water, for example, which freezes at four degrees Celsius, or positive 277.55 Kelvin. But liquid helium is unique in that it practically never freezes. You would need 20 times the pressure of the atmosphere for helium to reach solid form. What's even stranger is that even before you reach about 2 Kelvin in the negative 270 degrees range, you see quantum effects in action. Now, Justin Corey, a physicist and a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, explained it really well. I'll link a video down below. According to quantum mechanics, when atoms are cooled down to the same energy level, they start to behave in unison. And because they're all moving the same way, none of the atoms are bumping or moving against each other, so there is zero friction. That's why the reaction that you see when you cool down liquid helium is so mind-blowing. It goes from boiling to looking like it was being stirred, and then transforms into a superfluid state almost instantly. This kind of reaction could be the key to cracking the questions of how atoms and space move, and how galaxies, stars, and even planets are formed. Physicists have been trying to find the link between gravity and quantum mechanics ever since we found out that general relativity created by gravity can warp space-time. This superfluid theory pushes the boundaries of gravity to puzzling lengths. Powell Mazur of the University of South Carolina and George Chaplin at Lawrence Hill Livermore Lab in California actually suggests that our universe might have been born in a collapsing star. The combination of stellar matter and superfluid space could spawn dark energy or the repulsive force that is accelerating the expansion of the universe. That's right, the universe grows. And now, researchers like Stefano Liberati of the International School for Advanced Studies and Luca Maxion of Ludwig Maximilian University believe that their approach to thinking of space as liquid could explain how atoms move when grouped together at similar temperatures and pressures in space. When you think of space as a superfluid, it's easy to compare it to waves like the ocean or radio waves. And just like waves, superfluids could possibly disperse at different wavelengths and speeds and even dissipate or lose energy along the way. So researchers have their eyes and instruments trained on observing nebulas of high energy x-rays and gamma rays with hopes that changes in the radiation as it travels to Earth will help test their theory on superfluidity of space which just sounds so exciting, and this is definitely a lot to digest. The science community still hasn't found all the answers, like they never will. Space is just full of questions. So comment down below if you found this episode interesting, and feel free to like, subscribe, and share the channel with everyone else you know to see if they can wrap their heads around what the superfluid theory could mean for humanity. Thank you, and signing out. Bye!